Reaction of the backlash against the civil rights movement. And you know, when we celebrate Black History Month and have this major event in celebration of Black History Month, we're basically celebrating our rights movement, our civil rights movement, our human rights movement, and nothing can be more timely than the fact that we are having this uh, symposium, this gathering on mass incarceration as a new manifestation of this movement. The popular narrative that emphasizes the death of slavery and Jim Crow and celebrates the nation's, quote, triumph over race, end quote, with the election of Barack Obama, I was the first elected official in the state of New York to come out for Barack Obama. But nevertheless, it is dangerously misguided. The, co the colorblind public consensus that prevails in America today, i.e. the widespread belief that race no longer matters, has blinded us to the realities of race in our society and facilitated the emergence of a new caste system. And I think that again, uh, nothing can be better expressed at a time like this, when we are all gathering to take a good look at what does it mean for us as state legislators uh, to be here and to take a look at that from the perspective, from the real perspective of what's going on in our communities. Too often we celebrate, but it's not time to celebrate. And, and too often uh, when we celebrate, we, we misrepresent uh, what is actually the call to alarm. And so I'm so happy that we are here today uh, calling alarm to the reality that we've been sort of hoodwinked into believing that Jim Crow no longer exists, that the kind of barriers uh, that we thought we had overcome have been overcome. And because we're not in jail, we assume uh, we're doing okay. But the reality is that uh, this new Jim Crow is pervasive beyond those who are just so-called incarcerated, but it impacts the rest of us and our communities. Too often, uh, we are in a prison industrial type of economy uh, where we know that there are prisons that are empty but nevertheless kept open because somebody's making a living off of that. Sometimes we make decisions about whether someone should be paroled or not, not based on whether they would make a contribution to society but whether or not they are needed to keep a particular institution open so somebody can make a living for political agendas as opposed to human rights agendas. So again, we are honored to be a part of this. We're looking forward to the legislation that we can promote, that we can effectuate, uh, that will obviously open those doors and truly get rid of uh, Jim Crow and the sort of mass incarceration that we're experiencing uh, today. Thank you so much. Mass incarceration affects all of us, black, white, what have you. When I first came to Albany 20 years ago, I turned on the news, and I saw on the news a white guy with handcuffs being let out of the court on a perp walk. I didn't even know white folks got arrested. <laughs> I had no idea until I came up here. Didn't know. Didn't know. So, let me just say this. I have, I have been on the correct, the most important committee that I've been on. Yes, I'm the chair of the Labor Committee. Uh, 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 yes, I've done some great pieces of legislation, but you know what? The one committee headed by a chairman of the Correction Committee, Assemblyman Jeff Aubrey, yes. who yes. was the author of the Rockefeller Drug Law Bill to eliminate the Rockefeller Drug Laws. Right. And it was because of this coalition that we were able to do that. So it's going to be because of this coalition that we will deliver the message loudly and clearly that we will not stand for mass incarceration in our community. We will not stand for it. We fought once before, we fought twice before. We have to fight again. We have to fight again. I just had a job fair in, 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 in Harlem last week. No less, and it was only for three hours at the Harlem Armory. No less than 3,500 people showed up. Lie was around the block. Stretched from, from, from the middle of 5th and Lennox all the way down 5th and all the way up Lennox. A lot of people. 
all dressed to the nines. But you know what? One of the most important functions that we had at that job fair was that we had people from the Department of Corrections and, and all of our criminal justice services getting ready to talk about issuing certificates of relief. These are the things that we have to do. You know, I can't tell you how many times, and let me tell you, mass incarceration affects everything that we do. It, 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 it kills our families, it kills our culture, it kills our educational system, and we have to build it back up, all of us in this room. We have lost generations, generations, generations of families because of mass incarceration. So, we have to bring the coalition together again. And I can't tell you, we as legislators, Robert Rodriguez just entered the room, I see Eric Stevenson, legislators, I can't tell you when I'm campaigning and moving around, how many times I say, you know, my brother, would you sign my petition? And he says, I, I can't, because I'm a felon, I can't vote. Well, first of all, New York, the state of New York, we have some, we're actually a little better than most states. If you have finished your parole and whatever your sentence is, you are allowed to vote, felon or otherwise. Let's be clear. We have to get that message out. We have to get that message out only through this coalition. So I just want to say, I guess I've gone on too long. I'm sorry. No. No. I guess I've gone on too long. Keep going. I guess I've gone on too long. Come on, come on. So I know, I know, you know, listen, I just want to say thank you for being who you are. Because it's not going to take a legislator. We can legislate till the cows come home. That's right. That's right. It's not going to mean a damn thing. This is where the power is in all of you. You have to make us go. All right? You have to make us go so we can change the hearts and the minds. Listen, they tell us that crime is going down, right? They're closing prisons, right? Governor Cuomo closed about six prisons last year. Seven. Okay, whatever. I'm with you. Well, I'm with you. Well, you know why? And as chair of the labor committee, I can't tell you that my office was full every day with Department of Corrections labor, labor folks saying, no, we can't close these prisons. Keith, no, you can't let this happen. You're chair of the labor committee. You have to make sure that we work. Well, I said, if you're sitting around doing nothing, reading the paper, and the prisons are closed, what the hell am I protecting? <laughs> So that's where we are. Mass incarceration affects all of us. So with that, you know, I just want to leave you with a quote from Benjamin Franklin. If we don't all hang together on this issue, if we don't all hang together on this issue, they will hang us separately. Thank you.